Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Texas Flycaster. Today we're taking a look, a brief look, at Lake Conroe. That's out north of Houston on I-45. And this is a situation where I had some time. I was over in the woodlands. I had some time and went and took a look at Lake Conroe. And I'd been to the uh, this part of it before, but I went around the entire lake. And what I was finding was with the wind and the cool front coming in, this was two days ago, on Wednesday with the cool front coming in I had to find a place that was kind of sheltered and I was driving over this bridge and saw these fish moving out here in the flats I was like I recognize that it looks like back home it looks like the uh, carp I see all the time and I got out in here and I immediately realized that I was gonna have to put away all those previous thoughts I had about what it might be because these fish were not acting like my carp back home so, in the interest of fly fishing in the moment, and forgetting about the past, and forgetting about the future, I had to kind of make it up as I went along. I'm using a TFO BVK7 weight here, and it was really a good choice of rod because it gave me a chance to just take one back cast and cast on these guys, and, and I'm using actually a, a new camera too. It's a GoPro Hero 3 mounted on my head, and so things are kind of wacky right now as I'm getting used to this camera. But you can see that uh, I'm a little off the horizon and everything else. But this, uh, this situation is one where I could hardly see the fish. And I, in the interest of time, I cut some of the casting out. But uh, once I could kind of figure out to take a nice slow cast and a, and a medium strip and just um, basically let it hang, we got a fish on. And... Uh, I just couldn't exactly figure out what I was into because it didn't seem like a common carp. Well, as soon as he got close enough on this first time, he didn't even know he was hooked. He got close and he kind of gave me a look and then it was on. So these little runs, this camera kind of makes things kind of distorted, but this little runs about, about 40, 50 feet of line that goes out in no time at all. And this happened two or three times. This fish, it would, it would kind of like think it was gone, I guess. And then kind of quit pulling and I'd reel him back in and then he'd see me again and would be on again. So it was really fun and I knew I knew pretty much right away that we're dealing with grass carp. And I'd heard a lot about the grass carp, anecdotal talk about um, them being overpopulated here and, and everything else. And sure enough, um, these are some young grass carp that weigh in at about, I don't know, 10, 10 pounds. And as you'll see, two or three rip and runs and they uh, finally start to get a little tired and once I get them back in it's kind of crazy because they don't act like common carp at all they uh, are, are basically spent and they don't they don't flop in your hand or anything like that and you actually have to spend extra time reviving these guys when you um, release them um, this is a situation I like a lot because I've never been here before on this side of, of this uh, the bridge road uh, fishing. Last time I was here, must have been, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so. There was no water here for, I would imagine, about 100 yards. So Lake Conroe's in really good shape as far as water supply. It has a, a big problem with trash, in my opinion. It's a very dirty lake, and probably a lot of it is wind-driven from the uh, the uh, wind currents blowing it around the lake. And this area we're in right now, as I said before, is in the northern side, and it is um, actually in Sam Houston National Park, which doesn't mean it's any cleaner. So if you get a chance to check out uh, Lake Conroe, be sure to uh, be prepared to cast at these grass carp. You're going to want flies like the headstand fly. And on the bright sunny days, I'm guessing that that might be too bright. So you might try one of my uh, coyote carp flies. It's really hard to, hard to pinpoint what's going to work with just one exposure to these, these fish. I think that over time, if you... Uh, actually spend some time on these fish not only will you begin to zero them out you'll also be able to uh, actually um, figure out some other things about size and things like that a, a lot of it appears to me to be waiting on these fish to come to you I think that a stalking situation is kind of uh, uh, 
a give and take kind of thing where you might you might do all right, but you might do better just standing there and letting them mosey around you. They're very much like a herd of cows grazing on a like a small herd of cows grazing on a big pasture where they just kind of wander in. They eat a little bit and they wander out. There was really no rhyme or reason to their to their movements, and they they travel just like you see grass carp travel in these kind of packs or these herds, I would say, that uh, just go in and out of these areas to eat, and they have no real um, fear built in. They're not exactly. It appears that they're not even prepared for um, being stalked like this. And if you think about the way that they're shaped and everything uh, and the size they get to be, this could be a really, really fun outing. And I'm looking for folks who want to go out with me on this uh, from Houston, the woodlands, and areas like that. If you want to get out of town, let me know. I'll be in the woodlands the next few weeks off and on. And I would love to take you guys out and uh, get some exposure on these interesting and hopefully much larger variety of carp called the grass carp. Thanks for watching. I've got uh, several other videos getting ready to be produced in the next few weeks, mostly about the springtime action here in North Texas. Hopefully we'll get back to uh, Lake Conroe again and see if we can do this one more time. I think that uh, it's only going to get better as the weather gets warmer. This This is one situation where not only did these fish uh, go away, they went away really quickly as it got probably 5 to 10 degrees colder while I was there and started pouring down rain. And that really knocked them right out of the park. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, anything like that, I'll take a compliment every now and then for sure. Just leave a reply on this or fill out the contact page. And I appreciate your watching, Texas Flycaster. Okay, that's okay. Lots more.